get off yourself and onto the story you're ta- trying to tell. Mm. It's not about what they yeah. think about you. Are you smart? Yep. Are you clever? Do you Take look right? Out. And focus on why are you telling this story and commit to the story. Really commit to the story. And then the last thing I'd share, I was lucky enough to speak at a Gucci event in Miami before President Clinton, lots of, 10 years ago. And I was mm. speaking and I was watching him speak after me and I, he just captivated the room. Here's what he did. He would talk to you, you in the audience, just you. And he would lock eyes with you and he would talk to you as if you were the only person in the room. And then you probably feel uncomfortable with that level of intimacy because you're so locked on you and you'd look or you look up or down. And when you look back, he's still there and looks at you in a way like, no, I'm here just talking to you. And mm. then once you had that moment, he would look and go somewhere else. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today we have with us Simon Mainwaring. Simon is a brand futurist, global keynote speaker, New York Times best-selling author, highly regarded podcaster, and a prolific Forbes columnist, as well as a founder and CEO of award-winning strategic consultancy. Welcome, Simon. Thank you, Shahid. It's great to be here. Oh, it's an honor to have you. I love what you're doing. There's a lot of great things. Yeah, busy like any entrepreneur. We're out there hustling and every day you catch what you kill in the word. It's a terrible expression, but you've really got to, <laughs> you got to make it happen. If things are going to happen, it's yeah. very competitive out there. It's tough times in lots of yeah, different ways. Definitely you're doing something right. And I'd love to hear more about your podcast. How is that doing? thanks for asking. The podcast is called Lead with We, and it's on Apple, Google, and Spotify. And the focus of my work through the company We First is to help entrepreneurs increase Mm -hmm. their business growth by actually having a positive impact on people's lives. And that sounds really self-evident. You're making a product or a service that's adding value to their lives, but how do you actually improve their lives above and beyond that as well? And a lot of Mm. people now are looking for that, employees, investors, and so on. And so what I do on the podcast is I get the CEOs, CMOs, CSOs, Chief Sustainability Officers of some of the biggest companies in the world, as well as the Mm -hmm. fastest growing and most exciting startups, and interview them Mm -hmm. about why they're not only making products and services to do well, but why they're doing good in the world and how that's helping their business grow. So lead with we, it's called. And yeah, if you're on Apple, Google, or Spotify, tune in. Thank you for sharing that. It's not similar, but for us, we interview successful entrepreneurs like yourself and find out what makes them tick and what Mm. got them to where they are and also find out what their inner world looks like. What is that specialty inside that makes them do what they do and try to inspire others to do the same or grow and not to feel like they're left behind, but actually see that we're all the same. There's nothing really different other than what they have achieved, but there's some mechanism, there's some drive behind it. And that's what we try to bring out. No, fantastic. And we all need the support. The thing about entrepreneurship is you need this human scaffolding where you lean on each other and you get advice and guidance. Every entrepreneur has days when they want to throw in the towel, especially in the last few years. And everyone has great days where they're thrilled. We've got to do this ride together. Yeah. Simon, your podcast is top 1%, right? Yeah, top 1%, 1.5% 1. 1. globally. And Beautiful. It's the top 100 in some countries like Germany and other markets. And uh, it's, uh, I think the reason it's done well is because this idea of leading with we is really resonating with people where you want to get everyone yes. inside your company, everyone inside your brand community, building your business with you. But how do you do that? Mm. How do you inspire everyone that touches your business to understand what you're about, the role you're playing in the world, and the impact you want to have. I'll give you an example that we all may know. And this is a big company, but it's just, I want to give you an example that is clear. So Airbnb, we all know Airbnb. They do accommodation. You can go and rent a house or an apartment somewhere. Mm-hmm. They also do city guides and restaurant guides and music guides in different cities around the world. And their larger proposition, more like the role they play in the world, is they want to support universal belonging. They want to make sure that anyone 
can belong anywhere in the world. And you go, oh, okay, so I'm going to go mm. and stay in someone's house in Paris and I have a sense of belonging as opposed to sitting in a hotel. But at the same time, they do Super Bowl ads about inclusion. They give free accommodation to Syrian refugees and now Ukrainian refugees with hosts. Right. And so in good times, but also in bad times, they bring to life this idea of belonging by giving free accommodation yeah. to refugees. So it's important. just an example of how a company mm. can have a product and a service, but also do good at the same time. And it makes you like the company. You want to buy from the company. You want to support the company. You want to talk about it. That is wonderful. And that's why I can see the reason for the success of the podcast, because if you're providing those kind of component and understanding how businesses are doing it, when you're speaking to different CEOs, it can help others align with that. Yeah. It's a force multiplier for your business. Yeah. You as an entrepreneur, it's a lonely journey. It's a tough journey. There's up and down, mm -hmm. ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But what mm -hmm. if you ask yourself, why did you start the company? What's your purpose? Like, why do you why? exist as a company? Mm -hmm. And then you bring that to life in a way that everyone who joins you, whether they're an employer or a customer says, you know what? I believe in that vision too. I actually think yeah. that's a really good role to play in the world. So I want to work for you. And I'm going to stay here, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to, uh, and consumers will be like, oh, I want to buy your stuff because I like who you are. I like the way you're showing up in the world. And more and more, because you pick up your phone every day and you see the headlines and there's all this sort of scary news about climate and extreme weather and, and loss of biodiversity and homelessness and access to clean water and agriculture. There's all of these issues that we've got to solve for now. And if mm -hmm. somebody sees that your company is part of the solution rather than part of the problem, they go, hey, I like you. I like working for you. I like yeah. buying from you. And this is increasingly important, especially to younger consumers, younger demographics. So if you want to be relevant to the future, if you want to inspire people to work for you and buy from you, and if you want to capture these new market forces so that they push your company forward, then it's about doing well and doing good and about leveraging the power of we to get that done. And in the podcast, Lead With We, I explain how companies are doing it. And also in the book, I have a book, Lead With We as well. Oh, very good. And it's basically becoming together with your community, right? Like on the next level, it's like community on steroids because now you're providing the employee satisfaction, the consumers that are buying from you, you're bringing everyone together. Yeah, it's, it's a good way of putting it. Yeah, you're right. And think of it this way. Most of us in business think about, I'm the CEO, it's my company, these are my products, and I'm going to tell you why you should buy our stuff. Mm, and that's very self-directed, yeah? Mm, Instead yeah. of turning it around and saying, we have this company because we want to improve your life and other people's life in this way. And to that end, I've started this company, I've made these products. And in addition to these products, not only are they going to have a positive benefit, but our company is going to have a positive benefit out there in the world. It's not self-directed. It's off you and onto who you're talking to. And we all know this in life. If you walk into a party and you start talking to your, about yourself all night, people get yeah. pretty bored pretty quickly. But if mm -hmm. you have a conversation with people where you're interested in what they care about, you really understand what their values are and you know, what they're doing in their life and you add value to that and you show interest in them, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. much more interested in you. So it's just basic mm -hmm. human communication dynamics. But the other point I'd make is this. It sounds simple to go from me to we in terms of how you think about business, but it's actually pretty complicated. And I've been doing this for 13 years with Tom's and Timberland and Virgin Unite and SAP and Sony Pictures and so many other companies that are our clients wow. that we've searched. If you think about your role as a CEO of a company, even if you've only got five people, if you've really got a we focus instead of a me focus for your company, how does that change your role? How does it change about your priorities? How does it change who you hire? what products you make, how you day -to -day take- Day-to-day work. Day-to-day -day work. You yeah. see your theme, you see shade with, you know, the great resignation and quiet quitting and people wanting to work from home and people finally getting a work-life balance. If you are not yeah. really focused on the well-being of your employees and mm. really want to make their lives better through work, it's really hard to keep mm. them. And yeah, so, so that's true. just one piece of it. And then if you think about your customers in the same way, and then if you think about society and go, actually, how can I address this issue? Homelessness, water, all these different things that, you know, 
you may care about. And it's not any one of those things. It's all of those things. It's let's set our leadership strategy from a we mindset. Let's apply it to how we treat our people. Let's then apply it to what products we make and how we take them to market. And then let's look at the role of our company in our community, in society, in the world, in our industry, at a bigger picture. It's mm -hmm. pulling it through. And the book, Lead With We, and the podcast explains exactly how you do it. And I will say, Shad, I, I wanted to provide as much support as I can to entrepreneurs in terms of how to execute it because we've been developing it and applying it to our company and then applying it to our clients for a long time with great success. And so I've got the leadwithwecourse.com now, leadwithwecourse.com, oh, nice. that is actually a nine-hour course that will walk you through step-by-step step how you apply it as a leader, how you apply it to your culture, to your products, to your community, and then out into the world, and how that drives and accelerates your growth. All the information is at leadwithwecourse.com, and I'm just trying to help us all do better and do That's good awesome. in these difficult times. Yeah, it's so true, Simon. I've seen an increase of this type of business this type of a community-based involvement with your product and services since COVID. Yeah. COVID has changed the entire focus of how business is done and that we right. component is so important. I feel like this podcast, Super Entrepreneurs Podcast, from day one, it was always focused on providing value. It was just always based on value. And that is out there. You're serving but the we is also keeping in mind what you're doing as well. Like you're bringing yourself yep. into it as well and providing that kind of course and that kind of exposure to companies to simplify it because yep. we want right. to do good. Like every human being wants to do good, yeah. just don't know where to start. And then we start researching. We you know how people just spend so much time and money just trying to figure things out where if they could find a product or service from a company like yours, it simplifies everything. It just, it does faster it, way to do it. It really does. It's simpler and it's faster. And here's a, some secret sauce for your listeners. This stuff has to be simple because we're all really busy every day. We're all going to get our products yep. out the door, get our e-com going, mm. whatever it might be. Yep. There's mm. three simple th words you need to remember. Whenever you're making any decision as a leader, as an entrepreneur, if you're putting your product to market or whatever, choose to lead. Like, how are you going to lead on this issue? in terms of mm. the quality and the impact of the product you're going to make and take it to market. How are you going to do it with as many stakeholders as possible? So work with your employees, work with your suppliers, work with your customers. How do you engage them all in the launch and the impact of it? And lead mm -hmm. with we. How do you benefit the greatest number of people and the planet? So whenever you make a decision mm. at any level inside a company, big or small, you can just say, how do I lead with we here? How do I have a mindset? Do I really want to take the lead in terms of how mm -hmm. the company's growing up in the world? How do I get as many people involved as possible? And how do I have mm -hmm. a positive impact on the greatest number of people? And so it's a very simple formula you can apply to any situation. So can you share a strategy from your book that can help our audience? Sure. I'll give you some examples and I'll use big companies that uh, just because people will know them, if, if I mention someone, so no one will know, it's a little bit hard for them to imagine. Mm. I think, firstly, I think about IBM. IBM, we all know the big software company. And what they have is a really powerful program called Call, Call for Code. And what Call for Code does each year is it says, hey, we've got different issues that are really important in our lives. One year, it was social distancing with COVID. Another year, it was really focused on climate change. More recently, it was focused on sustainability. And what they say is they go, hey, we're going to open up this question to our whole community of developers inside IBM and outside IBM all around the world and say, how do we solve for this together? And then we will provide some funding to support the winning idea. Now, the reason that's a powerful example is Firstly, you're solving for an important issue that everyone's thinking about because each year now there's been mm -hmm. so many, we've had so many yeah. challenges in the last few years. Secondly, you're not trying to make it your own. You're, o you're open sourcing it. Involving you're saying, everyone. Involving everyone inside the company, competitors, yeah. developers, whoever it might everyone. be. Everyone. And then thirdly, you're providing some support to then make that solution real. And what is the result of that? You get the result you need, like a product or a solution. You build a halo effect for the brand, like you've elevated the brand because you're doing good in a really positive way, in a we way. 
And also you are demonstrating that you are someone who is not all about yourself, but you're really about the collective and the well-being of the collective. And so if you're a, if you're a startup, if you're like three or five people, you should always sit there and go, okay, why do I exist as a company? Like, why do I get out of bed in the morning? What am I trying to solve for? Are you doing it just to make money? Because 99% of the time, in 25 years of doing this all around the world, there's some spark of inspiration in an entrepreneur, you know, that they want to make a difference. They want to take this product or service to market to have some sort of positive impact. So what are you doing? And then how can you work with as many people as possible to have the greatest positive impact? And so you see that now companies large and small with all these different crises from Ukraine and the global supply chain and COVID and the, the murder of George Floyd, all of these issues have changed business. As you said, it's changed. We're all like showing up very differently. And the more you can demonstrate how you're doing good as well as doing well, the more you're going to be on the right side of history here. Definitely. It's a great time, especially if a CEO or a company is looking to make a drastic change or trying to shift something, this would be the best option to look at because well, they're making a, a bigger change. And it's true. And it's only going to get more important because here's the reality, Shia. I've got two kids, 23-year-old and 20-year-old daughter. I worry about their future. It's all a bit scary for them, I think. And what I've realized is that it's not linear. It's not each year we're going to do a little bit more good, but rather it's exponential because a lot of these challenges we face are really increasing in our future. We see all this extreme weather. We see all these different things going on where you think, oh, the way we're showing up in the world is not working. Too many people are suffering. The planet isn't doing well. We've got to do something differently. And so the expectation on business is going to increase exponentially. People are going to want, increasingly want to work for, buy from, and invest in companies that are solving for these issues. So the sooner you get ahead of that and you take a, a responsible product or service to market in a way that has a positive impact, the more you'll take advantage of that new expectation. Because the 1990s and the 2000s where just make money and then things will go on indefinitely are gone. We've had two mm. or three years of crisis after crisis. And if you look at yeah. all the data, you need to be showing up meaningfully in the world if you want to get ahead. Well said, Simon. That's why you're a speaker as well. Can you speak about well, that? I'll tell you, Shay, that I never wanted to be a speaker. I never thought about being a speaker. I was <laughs> I was an ad guy in Australia and London, and I worked on yeah. Nike for several years as a writer at their ad agency. Mm -hmm. And then I worked on Motorola through an ad agency called Ogilvy. And through all of that, I was just in the business, like everyone, of selling stuff. You were just getting stuff yeah. out there. But then I wrote these two books, and when they did well, you realize you've got to get this message out there. And so you start to become a speaker. And I got to tell you, the first speech I did, I was, uh, is on the stage where Steve Jobs used to do his iPhone presentations up in the oh, Yerba yes. Center, up in San Francisco. First speech ever, like mm -hmm. 1,500 people on the same stage. Wow. Terrified. First speech. First speech ever, yeah. Terrified, absolutely oh, terrified. And, that's um, incredible. The, uh, it was a TEDx, TEDx San Francisco. It was one of the first TEDx's back in 2011. Maybe, maybe hmm? you can share a tip on that for anybody that's going in front of a big crowd for the first time, please. Oh, absolutely. I'll share you some tips. Like I've done many keynotes around the world now. And I've, these tips I'm going to share are not mine. They are from other very experienced speakers who generously shared their advice. So I want to put that out yeah. there. When you go out to do a speech, whether it's a pitch or a presentation or whatever it might be, a lot of us get nervous. And the way that shows mm -hmm. up in your body is you go up in your breath and you hold your breath up in your chest and you're mm -hmm. in this suspended animation and we talk really quickly and all, all that sort of things. Yeah. The first thing you do is get on your breath, which means just relax your body and get your breath down into your diaphragm. Let it drop down. Let your gut come out again and really get on your breath because you win or lose a pitch for an investor or to sell your product or to get hired or whatever it might be, normally in the first few seconds of walking in the door, just by the energy yeah, that you show up. Energy with. is everything. Energy is everything. And so... Get on your breath, number one. The mm. second thing is get off yourself and onto the story you're trying to tell. Mm. So before I went and did that first talk, Good. and it's, it's not about you. It's not about what they yeah. think about you. Are you smart? Yeah. Are you clever? Do you Take look right? Take that out of your mind. <laughs> Take that out of your mind and focus on why are you telling this story and commit to the story. Really commit to the story. 
And then the last thing I'd share, I was lucky enough to speak at a Gucci event in Miami before President Clinton, lots of, 10 years ago. And I was mm. speaking and I was watching him speak after me and I, he just captivated the room. And here's what he did. He would talk to you, you in the audience, just you. And he would lock eyes with you and he would talk to you as if you were the only person in the room. And then you probably feel uncomfortable with that level of intimacy because you're so locked on you and you'd look or you look up or down. And when you look back, he's still there and he looks at you in a way like, no, I'm here just talking to you. And mm. then once you had that moment, he would look and go somewhere else. So you can see this. If you watch his presidential debates, you see him do this. He'll look at somebody else and he'll talk only to them and everyone else will disappear and he will lock eyes with them and they may look away, but he'll still be on them. And he'll do this time and time again through the room, one by That's one, one. And what's he's, mm. what he's doing is he's scaling intimacy. One by one, yeah. he is building intimacy in the he's room, spreading it. Not, he's not talking broadly no. at everyone. He's talking one for one. And actually, after that speech, I wrote an article in Forbes called The Magic of President Clinton and How You Get It, which I'm took back now and go, what an idiot. I mean, what am I doing writing about a president? Anyway. Anyway, I got a letter in the mail about six weeks afterwards from President Clinton's office saying, thank you so much. I read the article. It was Amazing. very insightful and so on. Perfect. But all of that is to say that be on your breath, recognize that you've got to commit to the story. It's not about you. Just commit yeah, to the story. Not about you. And mm -hmm. scale intimacy. Just go one by one Amazing. in the room and have Great an points. authentic connection. And I've, I've applied these insights that others have taught me for 12, 13 years of speaking now, and it really does work. So I hope it helps the folks. No, listening. thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. Can you share with us what you feel your innermost superpower is that got you to this point in life? My innermost superpower, <laughs> I'd say insecurity. No, I think we all feel like we've got something to prove and we run around yeah. the world while we're running around doing things. I think you've got to start driving you. No, I would say as an Australian, you grow up with this idea of being a mate. G'day, mate. How are you doing? Everyone's equal. Yeah, And because of that, I have a strong sense of compassion and empathy and fairness to everyone. If I see you being treated badly, I don't care by a boss, by any circumstance, I don't think it's okay. Why? Because we all have value. And so mm -hmm. what happened in 2007, 2008, the global economic meltdown that started my shift in career was I looked around and said, all these people are getting screwed because a few people are making money and all these other people are losing their homes and their healthcare and their jobs. And it happened all around the world. And I just felt so strongly that wasn't fair that I wanted to do something about it. And I thought business can help with that. And so that's why I started this journey. So I think my superpower is that I just Great. have a really strong, empathetic commitment to the well-being of others because I just think it's fair. It's awesome. right. And that's where this we comes from too, right? Yeah, and that's how you're absolutely. helping. Like, awesome. no, I don't want to do well if you're absolutely in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to drive my fancy car through my 20-foot high yeah. wall surrounded yeah. by a homeless camp. It's yeah. what are we doing with our lives? And, yeah. and the power yeah. of entrepreneurship, it's not just that you can make a lot of money. The power of entrepreneurship mm. is you can bring people into your company yeah. and help them to mm. do well and help the community do well and everyone's better. Yeah, and Simon, I can resonate to that. What you're saying is that I want what I have, I want others to have. And you always focus on the other person, trying to add value, trying to give them something, some information, some knowledge, some kind of trigger that can help them get to, or even take that first step towards what they desire. Because a lot of people desire a lot of things and they're not, you're not taking that step. They're yeah. not moving in that direction. Yeah. These, this is the whole purpose of this show is just to bring people like yourself that has seen the success and has done the things that they needed to do. And the key part of about this is that your focus is on everyone. You, yeah. Whatever you have, you want others to have. And that right. is a secret. When you can help someone else get what they want, automatically, by default, you're going to get what you want. So it's, yeah, it's great, Simon. I really appreciate you today for coming on our show. Thank you so much. And audience, thanks once again for joining us. And you heard Simon. His information will be in the show notes. If you're looking for something that can cause a, a more a we type of change in your corporation or company. He's definitely the guy. Everything is going heart-based and he's definitely the option. And thanks again for helping us grow. 
Without you guys, we can't see the growth. So thank you so much. And Simon, thank you very much. Thank you, Shahid. And thanks to everyone listening. Thank you.